What's going on, everybody? Today is Monday, September 11th, and you are watching and listening to the Daily AI Show Live. Welcome, everybody. There we go. How's everybody doing today? Good. 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 Well, today we have, um, there's a lot of energy in that, so we're just going to move on. <laughs> Lots of energy for our audience there, guys. Nailed it. Um, <laughs> What we're going to be talking about today, uh, we're excited about to talk about today is uh, AI and artistry, crafting originality beyond mere mimicry. So there's a lot in there. It's sort of a fancy title, but I think really what we want to talk about today is just, you know, that intersection of human and art and and what the future looks like for that. What some of the tools like the canvas and the and God knows there's so many others that you guys are using. Obviously, we know the mid journeys and other ones, um, but just wanted to kind of kick it off with you know, this idea of where are we now and where do you guys maybe see this going in terms of creating art and how it maybe will affect, you know, businesses going forward, I guess is a good place to start. Or if somebody else has another topic to jump in on. Well, well I'll say that just a quick thing, which is I think generally we, we assume that machine learning like when you can train a machine to do something, it is not comparable to what human creativity is. And I think we're learning that that's not necessarily the case, that these deep neural networks really I imitate the creative capabilities of human brains. So I think that the speed and the sort of latitude that large language models and now generative imagery systems like Dolly originally that we played with and so on. Those are showing us that there's like no limit to the creativity that's possible there. And then it's just a matter of humans selecting what they find appealing or not, which is true about art generally. Mm. Go ahead, Beth, what were you going to say? So, go ahead, go ahead. What? Hey, yeah. Aaron. So Robert said something that, that like, has been sitting in my brain uh, a couple Today, of days. Today, I've been a quiet. Couple sessions, uh -oh. A couple sessions ago. Oh, okay. You said... I'm not, I'm not dinging, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will the dinger please stand up? Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but Robert, you basically said something like, well, somebody's going to go in and say, make this in the style of yeah. this artist. And that that was going to be the end goal. And... Uh, that surprised me because that's ne that's not my end goal. That's never my end goal. I'm actually not trying to make it in the style of uh, of someone else. I'm using other styles as a reference um, so that I can get to a place where uh, the image is a little closer with me. All right. But so, but but the beauty of that tip type of pathway, Beth, is that it it cuts all the guesswork out. Like this style, I know I like this style. Go, go ahead and make it in his style or her style. And so if you're trying to create a type of look or vibe, you're like, well, do you have kind of like an 80s theme with with retro? Well, and you can't really quite get the words out. It's not working. And so right. the easier pathway, which is going to happen, do it in the style of Picasso. Oh, boom. You know, it's exactly, that's what I wanted. I mean, so I think that's where I was going with that comment is that, um, you know, people are going to use these main, these models, image generation models, uh, the quickest pathway to that solution. Now, the obviously the end result of that and the inevitable end result or inevitability of that usage is that 20 years from now are there going to be enough original artists to copy you know because everybody's using ai to generate art are there going to be any people that come to, cream to the top are musicians and artists going to be so kind of uh, almost like the fringe are they going to become like uh, you're gonna have to go to it, see them live in order to even hear somebody. Because the, the the thinking is, I'm not sure I agree with this, is that everybody's going to have generated content. Your Netflix is going to be give me a movie with these five actors, all of which are dead already, an action film that is also set in Mars. Boom, wow. go. And so that uh, then would be a music. Uh, some, give me some music that's kind of like Dre, but also like Ice Cube, but give me a, actually I want an 80s retro with some techno. See, so, I, I don't, I don't agree 
Um, and and it sort of feels like if you let everybody just eat potato chips all the time, would they ever eat anything else? Yes. I mean, they like if you let a five year old eat potato chips or French fries or goldfish or whatever for like ever at some point, the palate, the like if I'm just seeing dead people play scenes out that are similar to something that I loved like there, I think there is a yearning for actual human connection and the knowledge that it was th created. Th this but is kind of an argument that I, I'm hearing. I don't agree with it. I'm just okay. saying there's people that are touting that this is how AI is going to be used. I, I don't. I think there's more. Like you, to your point, Beth, there's more shared experiences, human connection with music. Like we like sharing music together. We like uh, a, an artist that we're familiar with, and we like to. Hey, have you heard that new song? It, there's there's a lot. Of, there's a community involvement with with shared experiences. So I, I don't necessarily believe with this guy or agree with this guy, but I might. The kids that are born in ten years, they might have a different experience. So uh, has anyone heard of? Answered to that question, yes, there are still unique artists. My art does not, my digitally generated art using Midjourney doesn't look like anybody else's and does have shortcut influences. But then I've taken it and changed a bunch of things, which is kind of how artists do <laughs> physically in the world make their art also. Carl. So, but wouldn't you think there would be the rise of the new artist? Mm -hmm. The AI artist, you one could call it, where music, uh, design, art are all like there are people now that can leverage the tool right. and it becomes this new thing. And it's just part of so you could have the painter or the AI artist. And I think there's a world that can exist that both can be successful in that and it depends on preferences, right? I think the big thing is just to make sure like, hey, which one is which? Is this AI art? Cool. Let's just make sure people know versus, oh, is this like from a human? Yes, that's cool. Let's know that too. And I think that's kind of like, we're trying to find that, but I believe there will be the rise of the people that aren't just going to put, oh, paint in the style of this. It's like, there'll be people who are prompting prompt in the style of this person who has created these amazing prompted artwork and you know will celebrate their artwork with everybody else i think it's going to give a rise to more of your um artists in both music and, and maybe spoken word or let's just um let's call him like i follow a guy on tiktok called harry mack who does off the top of his head um rapping in the streets after giving being given three or four different words it blows my mind every single time he does it and he does it live that's how his, that's how his um sorry his, um that's okay that happens to me too i go to i go to pre-share and then it, it brings it right up onto the onto the thing um but what i was going to say is here there we go um thank you I'll bring, I'll bring it up in a second what i was going to say is um the like harry mack for instance he's doing live in the street or if we have a painter who, you know, takes inspiration from the city or does something for people or whatever and does it, you know, does something in the street. Or if we have a music like you'll see Ed Sheeran a lot of times, he has his songs, but a lot of times he's using layers and he just stands on stage with a guitar and does layer after layer after layer after layer until he's playing a full song. AI isn't creating that. He's creating that in the moment and tomorrow's may feel a little bit different than today's depending on how he did this beat or that beat. And I think there's going to be a huge emphasis placed on the value of that because people are going to know, oh, that's being created in the moment. <laughs> yeah, but that, that can be programmed by AI. Give, give me five unique changes I didn't do last night. Do it today, uh, AI. You're like it'll, it, it can be programmed to do that. But right, I think you're. They're right. not you unique. Point. You can program. Yeah. And we know you can program a computer with drip nozzles to create actual paintings on canvas that are 100% AI created, but use real world physical materials right. to create that. And we know <laughs> yeah. that can exist. Yeah. Right. And maybe people but, will love that too. And they'll say, look, the, the beauty of that is that in the person who coded it to say to your point, Beth, it's more about the prompting of it's the beauty in knowing that Beth used her knowledge and, and your, your art, artistic, you know, uh, expertise to 
tell the tool how you wanted to shape and mold what you wanted to. And is that any less valuable to me? No, no. It, yeah, it isn't. It isn't. And, I, and that's why it's I believe art is art. Right? Yeah. So art is the eye of the beholder. Art is art. I, I don't care how it's generated. If I look at this piece, I'm like, wow. If I have a visceral impact, if it's emotional connection, I don't care if an AI did it. And I'm a photographer. And I, so I, I'm, I'm very much into creating art for how I've been for 30 years, but um, I still can and I, I follow all the competitions, you know, National Geographic, the art photography competition. Recently, the winner was an AI generated piece of art. I was like, it's beautiful. I don't care, you know, but I did really love the old photographers of National Geographic for the last, you know, several decades. They were amazing artists and, and they had to get into really weird situations to capture really unique pieces of, of art. And then Photoshop came out and then it made it even more fun. So, I, yeah, I, I, that's my thoughts. Yeah. I, I think I think with any new medium, and this is kind of kind of that kind of event, that it's a new medium, and anytime you introduce that, that's going to be disruptive, mm -hmm. right? And so, uh, and artists in particular are very good about integrating new medium and trying out new things, and using all of the available tools for them to create new art. Tell and that that's to all these writers right now. <laughs> What's that? Tell that to the Hollywood writers on strike right now. They're, well, they're that's, see, not... that's the thing is uh, what the writers, I think, are truly, really trying to, to do in that case is uh, put in protections to fight against greedflation. Right. Okay. They, fight against so, what? So so the strikes mm. now, uh, one of the big things about AI is being a component is the writers are, have some forethought. They, they have some future sight on this. Uh, and the actors too. They know that what drives the producers or the production companies like Netflix and Disney and things like that is money, right? And they're going to do whatever they're going to do to try and spend the least amount of money and make the most amount of money. So the strikes are really about protecting the writers and the actors, the people who are doing the work against those, those perceived you know, future pitfalls, whether all the scripts will be written by AI or all of the actors will be replaced by AI versions of them. And that's what they're they're really trying to protect against. Is, and, and that I believe is is the regarding to AI is is the main thing thing that they're they're striking about. But what I'm saying is those artists or artists in general have always uh, taken any new medium or new technology and incorporated and created new things out of it, right? Usually, and yeah. while you and while you're you might be right, Robert, when talking about hey Netflix make me X Y Z movie and that'll be certainly a uh, an aspect of it. Beth is completely correct in saying that people will want new things. People always want to try new flavors. Right, yeah. they'll get bored of X, Y, Z, and want A, B, C, or, or, or Robert. I, I, I think, think there's definitely room for for all of those things, but it is it will definitely be, and we've already seen uh, the beginnings of this, a very disruptive time, and so I Could, think what we just have to 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 make sure is we understand what this technology is. I've been hearing lots of anthropomizing of of AI. AI created this. AI did this. It's like, but you must realize yeah. AI does not have a will of its own. AI right. is creating. Right. Look what my oven did. <laughs> it's a really advanced typewriter. It's a really advanced technology. It's the new Photoshop. You know, it's, it's the new Word document. It just can make things a lot easier. The barrier is lower. It, it is an advanced tool that can do a hundred steps for you as opposed to 10 steps. And if you have the skill and the experience to say, these are the 100 steps I want you to take, you will get something out and you are the one who instructed it to do so, right? You Carl, are what do you have to say? And the will behind it. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, you know, just going off Jimmy's point, I think like, and, and Beth's point too, unless... I know how to make a movie correctly. If I prompt something, I want to these actors in, you know, in an action movie in Mars. I don't. And maybe it'll get there where that prompt alone will get me a pretty good movie. But there's so much more. 
like nuances in the storytelling aspect mm. right and, it's all and it's part- all trainable though it's all j- just like the pizza yeah. commercial that they did coca-cola did an ai generated commercial i mean it's terrible but it's it's halfway there i mean halfway there but you're, really assuming, a long way. you're assuming that the recipient is passive if it's all trainable the ai does everything you put like your quarter in you ask for the thing and then it's it spits out to you and you passively receive it I don't think that's how it happens. I think it's an interchange, an active interchange. Mm. Just, <laughs> now, be that as it may, it's still going to be something that um, is 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 no, generated. So, granted, there is a there is a storytelling group that I follow. It's called Muse, and they teach, I guess, videographers, filmmakers even photographers, how to tell story with your footage. And they actually just launched a course, which made my eye roll, like how to use AI to complete your storytelling. We programmed an AI how to do, and then it was literally just a chat. Like it was them teaching you how to prompt using their style. I was like, okay. But I think wouldn't people have to know or like I said in my previous point, maybe that's the rise of the new filmmaker. The new filmmaker has either a combination or fully where they can tell, I want this type of storytelling. And it's very, very comprehensive. It isn't just that. It's this is what I want. This is where I want this. In this scene, I want this. Like, like take the movie Reservoir Dogs. <clears throat> to, to really, really unpackage that. That can't just be prompt today. That can't be prompted. Like you can say, I want a movie like Reservoir Dogs, but to have that kind of creative thinking of Quentin Tarantino, that's that is that is trainable. Me, it's all trainable it, 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 with enough data points. Like the, the, the guys, the podcast that. listening to, they wanted to recreate Mr. Beast content, and so they fed it all of Mr. Beast videos he's ever created, and they. And it produced a, a transcript for a, a Mr. Beast video because but, it had plenty of data based on Mr. What Mr. Beast came right, out and so Quentin Tarantino would be based on that movie or that his style. So you could, I, I would, I would love there to be Quentin Tarantino coming out with his new movie versus a trainable thing coming out with what Quentin Tar- Tarantino has done in the past and really compare what the things that come out of both. So you're talking about novelty, and I just want to throw out one word, which is temperature. So random inputs to a deep neural network generate novelty. And uh, that's how, you know, uh, 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 creativity happens in artificial intelligence. Right, which is different than creativity. And Aaron, I know. (laughs) <laughs> that you are like sitting on the fence, but I just want to say, and creativity in humans is not like, it is not a random generator, right? There, there generally is a thread for humans that moves to the next idea. Now the next idea may be yes. Anding. I have an improv background um, and an improv approach to making digital art actually. Um, uh, it, so that things are things are entering and you're choosing them and deciding how you want to use them, but that isn't random for humans. Just Aaron. like how AI works. Because our brains work with information that we've fed it, and we make decisions, we create art, we make the de- same way that the neural networks are trained, that they're based on human. And so it's, it, I mean, I hate, I hate that I'm arguing this case because I don't believe in it, but I'm arguing the case. That, <laughs> but it's just, it's just that it, it, it isn't going to be, indist- it's going to be indistinguishable in the future. Yeah, I, 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 I think though, like going back to Quentin Tarantino, his, his references and his inspirations are a lot, not from his previous films. Right. His inspirations right. are from like a whole body of everything he's Works learned. Yeah. From, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So, wait, wait, no, you almost, he almost said it right. A whole body of other videos and other, other movies and other, other music that he's not that, but I mean, his, his, his own life experience could be taken into that or something he's seen be like, 
I can translate that. How many movies have we or producers and directors have created things based on life experience, not on previous movies too? So like I said, though, in my chat, it would be I, I would be watching. I'd be in the theater the entire weekend of a Quentin Tarantino competition of his movie versus an AI. I would be like, this is the greatest film festival ever, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I would just sit there and watch uh, I don't care who wins. Yeah. The this Daily the greatest, like, Film Festival is happening. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Aaron. So, guys, so um, I, I guess I, I know I said something like this last week, that um, I already believe that we predominantly as humans we are the product of what's been fed into us over life so it's not just the life experiences that we have but it's the books that we read the movies that we watch the the jobs that we do they they form how we create something so you know whether whether you're a marketer or a businessman or a musician or whatever you you have a style based on what you've learned amongst other things so I think I'm agreeing with Robert here, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think that with a, hey, I don't always disagree with you, Rob. <laughs> but I think, you know, like, I'm not a, I don't consider myself an artist. So that's not a gene I got. My sister, my twin sister got that, not me. But I love the fact that I can just open mid journey up and go crazy and create stuff. And the stuff I create is probably not going to be the same as the stuff you create even the topics that I choose. So, you know, I think that's definitely lowered the barrier for people to become quote unquote artists. And I love that about mid journey, if nothing else. And I'm really looking forward to the video stuff in the future. But in terms, in terms of originality, I'm not a, look, I think 99% of the time, I think we're all a product of our past. So the originality factor, can AI come up with it? I don't know if we haven't fed it to it, maybe it can, maybe it can't. Mm. I agree. Um, I want to, before we go too far into it, because I know we, we don't have a ton of time left, is get into one of our um, one of our commentaries. Uh, William, thanks, William, for putting in your uh, your your comment here. And you said to throw an interesting wrench into your conversation. Then you actually said after that wrench or opportunity, uh, which I love. So I'm just going to pull up the I'm going to share it really quick um, so people can see what you uh, were talking about. Uh, if you can. Yeah, right. Quite, quite so this one's in the so this is this is interesting, and uh, he actually gave a little more des description, but I'll just kind of show it. I won't show this video or anything, but if you go to the frequently asked questions, it basically answers what is this about. So like, what's your project? Basically, what they're saying is like we created all the mathematical melodies that can exist in the world. We've done it. Then what we did is yeah. it said because we did it, we were we could have copyrighted, but then we turned it all over to Creative Commons. So therefore, since we've created everything and turn it into Creative Commons, and everything it now exists now, over time, overlap is inevitable. When Adam plucks a melody from Medley X and another songwriter, Beth, way to go, Beth, accidentally <laughs> plucks the same melody that results in lawsuits. Uh, copyright does permit independent creation, so and so. So basically what it's saying is, it's left in a near impossible situation. Um, basically saying, this will stop people from being able to sue on copyright claims because this company all the music.info has created all the possible music mathematic mathematically that can be or melodies i should say not music and so therefore it's impossible to claim right to it because they did and turned it all over to opens uh, yeah crazy. so i have an opinion about this i heard about this about two months ago this guy was on a podcast and he was a lawyer and he's claiming about it he's all bragging about it which i i, I kind of had and i understand his motivations behind it because he's trying to protect those people that like i created this work so i get to own it for se my lifetime plus 70 years that's the current copyright law right and so he was like that kind of he kind of got annoyed about those frivolous claims that artists have that prevent these poor artists from you know making a variation that they didn't even know was a variation of a of a you know Katy Perry song or whatever but his but what he did is he went far in the other spectrum and quite frankly I don't know how this is even working I, I I'm not a copyright attorney yeah. but it seems as though if you use AI to generate it it can't be copyrighted so I'm not sure how he got past this whole we copyright all these melodies and put it to you know uh, common source or whatever yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's going to hold up in a court of law if everybody ever pushes it in my opinion, because right now, as you know, copyright U.S. Copyright Office does not give uh, uh, 
it does not allow you to copyright something that's been AI generated. So right. Well, I wanna, but what, I what it does do really is quick because we did, just really quick because Matt Wolf brought this up on his uh, his YouTube video, mm -hmm. and I know we bring up this copyright law that came up and said you it, nothing could be copyrighted if it's AI generated. I didn't independently verify this. What Matt Wolf said though is if you look at that, that was specifically talking about art that had zero human intervention in it, and so. I know it hit the news and hit all the stuff, but his point was, hold on a second. That's not the same thing as what Beth is creating. That's not right. saying that what Beth is creating cannot be copyrighted. It's saying um, that in this particular case, it was wholly generated with no human intervention, art or whatever it was, and that cannot be copyrighted. At least that's what Matt Wolf said. I will. I might be wrong on that, but it, like that's what I heard from him. And I thought, oh, that's interesting because that's not- William. I love your take because he's <clears throat> Williams like commenting, but I'd love his take on what that would mean and how, you know, uh, from a legal sense that would, you know, how would one side argue it versus the other side? Well, also to, uh, to uh, address your, your point, Robert. Um, yes. If it's AI generated, Right. And doesn't have and it's not enough human expression and all those kinds of things. It isn't copyrightable. That means it goes into public domain. And therefore, if every possible melody is in public domain, then anyone could draw the melody from public domain. And it isn't a matter of of copyright at that point because it's public domain information. So okay. if anyone creates a new song with that melody, okay, then sense. there's that argument. I'm sure William has a a, a comment on, on my interpretation, but uh, that's that's how it strikes to me. It's like, oh, if it's not copyright, it's public domain. Well, so personal performance goes beyond just the sequence and timing of intervals in in the mm -hmm. uh, common database that's available now for every possible melody. That the voicing that. Uh, you know, an artist does in their live performance can be different from, from performance to performance and their ability to do that and stay within the sort of <clears throat> predictive mathematical boundaries of what makes for good music. That's an art, you know, that's a, that's a talent to do that in the moment. And I believe Robert that yes, an AI can learn to do that as well and create variations on the fly. But I, I don't think it's going to any longer be as as possible as it was prior to what William shown us uh, to copyright a certain sequence of notes and fight about it in court. That's that's kind of history. Now it's all about performance. Well, the thing is, he's actually done the same thing. His new project is uh, patents. He's going to do the same methodology about music. He's going to go after patents now. Okay, so my understanding as a musician is that you can't copyright a pattern of notes because it's that. What you copyright are the lyrics and the rhythm and the groove and all of that. Any other thing that I'm looking well, at this, I'm like, ice, so is this, bum, 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 uh, bum, bum, this? Is a lot like yeah. uh, right. with your face. Under your face. Sure. And yeah. you've You've taken mathematically all of the notes. I get that there's a finite set, but in the West, there's a different finite set than in Middle East. Like, does this involve quarter tones? Does this involve like, I mean, there's a lot of variation here. Um, I Are we to TLDR? Come on, June, we take us home. <laughs> TLDR, <laughs> all right. Oh yeah, we're already there. Okay. Uh, yeah, everyone, give us your uh, one thing on uh, uh, on art and uh, AI. What do, what do we see in the future? Go. In the future, um, geez, I, my well, crystal, my crystal ball was broken on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to continue to see more exploration into you know everybody who's kind of given Facebook you know crap when they when they turn their name to Meta and they pushed really hard. Everybody said, oh, that failed, it failed. I think they're just frankly a little still ahead of their time. And the, the, the rudimentary things we're seeing with meta and these virtual realities and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to when that stuff gets um, mass adoption, when AI is able to create 3D worlds and stuff like that as easily as it can create an image on, on uh, Midjourney. And I only say that because I'm really interested to see, to Carl's point, what is a 3D world, you know, uh, interpretation or our um, visual experience and, and maybe even tactile experience look like 
if you have some of these great, you know, uh, directors or great artists creating that? What it, what would it be like to walk through a Salvador Dali painting and feel it and see it and all that? And I get very excited about that because to the whole point, yeah, the VR, Aaron's got the VR. Um, I get excited about that. So I, I think that's the future is going on. You know, yeah. we're very used to, I hear the music here. I see what I see in front of me. I can touch this, this, you know, this uh, mold or whatever. But I really do think there's going to be a lot of experiences that go well beyond that and break that wall. And uh, I get excited about that because I get excited about the artists that are out there. And to Carl's point, like what they will take that, interpret it, and then do with it will be better than what AI could do on its own. That's my take. Can somebody do a quick TLDR on Brian's TLDR? <laughs> is that your long winded, Brian? <laughs> Nobody has well, ever well, not well, said I'm long winded. <laughs> for me, I'm excited about where this is going to go. So, for those of you who don't know, that's a VR headset. I think the future of this and AI plugged into it is going to make the gaming community and the the movie community and the music community just so much more interesting, exciting, and unique. <laughs> 2010 um, called Aaron. They, <laughs> they they want that they want that theory back. I think I think that the whole virtual was like this huge ramp that everything just died, especially since Meta didn't really take off. Yeah. That's my my, my TD. My TLDR is the whole term "starving artist" is going to be <sighs> redefined as absolutely gutter trash artists. Like they're going to be so poor because AI is going to take over all the creative. I'm just being harsh but um the, the, the truth be known i think that in this space it's gonna it's gonna make the artists that are around now such a a unique uh the true artists the ones that don't use technology that are using paintbrushes they're gonna be pushed to the fringe and i, I i'm afraid to see what happens to them so uh, so I'll jump in here. My TL uh, DR is that um, new artists are coming. Uh, and I we talked a lot about control here. My process is digital improvisational collage. That's what I do in Mid Journey. I think the most exciting things happen when you're collaborating with AI as opposed to trying to control it. Not like weapons or... <laughs> stuff but That's in this topic. kind of be, artistic uh yeah i'm gonna say creativity innovation and invention are all skills that ai can extend and expand upon yeah and just to take it further just just because i'm alone that's why <laughs> and he's and he's super succinct. <laughs> any others before we wrap up? Anybody else have any uh, last minute thoughts on this one? Uh, I think uh, an interview. We're going to start an interview series where but that's not live, uh, and uh, I think uh, William is a great candidate for that because that has come Indeed. up a bunch. Yes. So. I agree. Definitely. Uh, and based on William's latest comments, uh, I'm going to deep dive further. Uh, in <laughs> for the future of AI <laughs> art, uh, I'm going to say human plus AI collaborations is what we need to incentivize and concentrate on so that everyone understands this is a tool and we'll get better output and more creative output from people if they just accept it as a as a tool and not uh, not a terrible threat, but definitely protect against that. Love it. That's a great place to end on. Okay, that's it for today. See you, Alana. Have a Happy great Monday. rest of your uh, Monday or wherever you are, and we will see you again tomorrow. Till then, bye. 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 <clears throat>